In this video, we are going to solve the equation y prime of t minus y of t equals sine of t with y of pi over 2 equals 0 using Laplace transform. So why is this an interesting problem? Or why is it different than the other ones? Well, if we remember, if we want to use Laplace transform, we would have to apply Laplace transform to this equation. And we will obtain Laplace transform of y prime of t of s it's s times y of s minus y of 0. But our initial condition, it's y of pi over 2 equals 0. So there it is, the problem that we encounter. So what does that mean? It means we are going to have to use a substitution so that our initial condition is going to be starting at 0 and we can apply Laplace transform. So we will have to shift our... Um, variable pi over 2 units to the left. So in order to do that, we are going to make another substitution n equals t minus pi over 2, which is shifting pi over 2 units to the left, which means a variable t is actually an n plus pi over 2. So what does that mean for our equation 1? Equation 1 becomes y prime of n plus pi over 2 minus y of n plus pi over 2 equals sine of n plus pi over 2. But um, sine of n plus pi over 2 can be computed using trigonometric formulas. It's sine of n times sine of pi over 2. Oh, sorry sine of n times cosine of pi over 2 plus sine of pi over 2 times cosine of n. We know that cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so we end, and the sine of pi over uh, 2 is 1, so we end up with just cosine of n. So our equation that we have here becomes, let's call it equation 2, y prime of n plus pi over 2 minus y of n plus pi over 2 equals cosine of n, just to have easier computations. So um, we actually want an equation with an initial condition starting at 0. So um, for that, let's use the substitution w of n is equal to y of n plus pi over 2. But we need the derivative, so y prime of n it's actually using chain rule y prime of n plus pi over 2. So if we replace this into equation 2, we are actually going to get w prime of n minus w of n equals cosine of n, where w of 0 is actually equal to, if I replace here, w of 0 is actually equal to y of pi over 2, right, of 0 plus pi over 2, so pi over 2, and that is an initial condition given pi over 2 equals 0. So our equation, let's call it 3, it's y prime minus y equals cosine n with w of 0 equals 0. So this is the equation that we are going to uh, compute using Laplace transform. Now we are all safe, right? So apply Laplace transform to both sides and we get Laplace transform of W prime of S minus Laplace transform of W of S equals Laplace transform of cosine of N of S. So we get S, let's call it W of S minus W of zero minus W of S equals cosine uh, Laplace transform of cosine n is um, s over s squared plus 1 it's from the table where you can use the definition. So in order for us to find w of s, we'll factor it out. So we have w of s times s minus 1 minus w of 0. It's um, 0, so we don't have that anymore, equals s over s squared plus 1. So w of s is s over 
s minus 1 times s squared plus 1. I actually uh, here make sure it, you don't confuse it with s times s minus 1 is w of s times some fraction. So in order for us to find w of n, right, we'll have to do the inverse Laplace transform of s over s minus 1 times s squared plus 1. So let's do that using partial fractions. Uh, we learned in the class that you can do it using convolutions as well. So a over s minus 1 plus b times s plus c over s squared plus 1. So we multiply by s minus 1 times s squared plus 1. So we get s equals a times s squared plus 1 plus bs plus c times um, s minus 1. So in order for us to find abc, we actually can open up or open up the parentheses, but we can also give values. If s equals 0, we're going to get 0 equals a plus uh, negative c. So we get this equation where a equals c. We keep it in mind. If s equals 1, we get 1 equals 2a. Um, and then this whole parentheses is 0. So we just get a equals a half. So we can quickly say c is a half as well. So we have just b to find. So if we set s equal to 2, we get 2 equals 5a, so it's 5 times a half, plus 2b plus c, so plus a half, everything times 1. So from this relation, we can find b. So plus 2b plus a half. 2 equals 3 plus 2b, so 2b equals negative 1, b equals negative a half. So now we have all the values. So we can go back here and we can say this is equal to 1 over 2 times 1 over s minus 1 plus b s plus c. So minus a half s plus a half over s squared plus 1, which we can separate it in a half times 1 over s minus 1 minus 1 over 2 times s over s squared plus 1 plus a half times 1 over s squared plus 1. So these are easily giving us w of n, it's 1 over 2 e to this one from the table, it would be e to 1t. But don't forget, we are calculating w of n. So that's our variable. So it's going to be e to the n. Minus 1 over 2, this function is cosine of t, but in our case it's cosine of n. And then this function here, it's sine, so plus a half sine of n. So we found that w of n is equal to a half e to the n minus a half cosine n plus a half sine n. So um, w of n right, the w of n, it's actually equal to what? Well, w of n, from our substitutions, it's y of n plus pi over 2. It's y of n plus pi over 2, which is equal to y of n plus pi over 2, and plus pi over 2, it's t. So it's equal to y of t y of t that we wanted to find, it's equal to y of n. So it's 1 over 2 e to the n minus 1 over 2 cosine n plus 1 over 2 sine n. Now the problem is we have t and then I have here n. Well, we have a relation between n and t and is t minus pi over 2, right, because everything was shifted. So basically, here, instead of n, we are going to put t minus pi over 2. And then cosine of t minus pi over 2, and then plus 1 over 2 sine of t minus pi over 2. And we can actually say that y of t 
was also equal to w of t minus pi over 2, right? Because n was actually t minus pi over 2. So that's how we place it in here. We actually get our final answer here. So using these trigonometric identities that I have here, cosine of t minus pi over 2 is sine of t, and sine of t minus pi over 2 equals negative cosine of t. So if we replace them in this equation, if we replace them here, we are going to get that y of t equals 1 over 2 e to t minus pi over 2 minus 1 over 2 sine of t, because this cosine of t minus pi over 2 is sine of t, and then minus 1 over 2 cosine of t, because this sine of t minus pi over 2 is 1 over 2 cosine of t. Uh, and if you probably uh, noticed, I love to actually use another method to double check my answers. So in this case, I actually chose to solve the same problem again. So this initial value problem with this equation and this initial condition that started at pi over 2. I chose to solve it using finding the homogeneous solution first and doing the characteristic equation we get to this homogeneous solution and then using the particular solution, you, uh, finding particular solution using undetermined coefficients, this method that we've done at the very beginning of the course. I did the first derivative and uh, the function replaced back into the equation and actually ended up with uh, finding the solution of the this format, y of t equals c1e2, the t minus 1 over 2 sine of t minus 1 over 2 cosine of t. So if you notice or if you want to compare this result with this green one, you might notice that the last two terms are identical. Now the first term, it's 1 over 2 e to t minus pi over 2, while for this second method, it's c1 e to the t. So how do we get it to be t minus pi over 2 at the exponent? Well, we have an initial condition of y of pi over 2 equals 0. So if we replace that into this equation, just above, right, into this one, and we do some algebra, like 0 on the left-hand side, and then c1e to pi over 2, minus 1 over 2 sine of pi over 2, minus 1 over 2 cosine of pi over 2. Well, cosine of pi over 2 is 0, sine of pi over 2 is 1, and we actually end up with c1 e to pi over 2, it's a half. So calculating c1, we get 1 over 2 e to negative pi over 2 because we are dividing the previous uh, equation by e to pi over 2. So y of t, it's 1 over 2 e to pi over 2, that's the constant, times e to t. So basically we copy the half and we copy the base and so, um at the exponents, but it, that's t minus pi over 2. And that's how we actually end up getting the same answer using both methods.